the origins of this conference began um, in this town 20 years ago. Next in month. Seattle. The origins of it. Oh, like nice. The, kind of the, the reason why I do this. So 20 years ago, um, May 10th of this year, I walked into the doors at Astrid Studio Invisible Creature, and I got an internship. Man, that's and, crazy. And the gist is, um, in a matter of a summer, working alongside Don uh, and Ryan Clark, Dimitri Argis and Greg Lutzi, um, and, and at that time... Did you uh, say Greg? Greg Lutzi, yeah. Like Visual Disco. Supply Company? Yeah, yeah for sure. Wild. We all worked together in the basement of Tooth & Nail Records. <laughs> yeah. And I grew exponentially in a matter of months. From little things like, hey man, don't put a drop shadow on that, or this is actually where you should buy your type, or check out all these books and inspiration that we, you know, That's look insane. at. Um, and it just really, like, from a, from a guy who was from Memphis, which is fairly a small town. I mean, it's a huge town, but, like, small town mindset. We're definitely in a bubble. Mm -hmm. I just didn't feel relevant. I worked at a record label at the time. I had hired uh, Don to do a package for a band named Skillet, and, um, which they're huge now. But huge. anyway, I came here, and I grew exponentially in a matter of months. Yeah. And... Uh, long story short, I left Seattle three years later, came back home to Memphis to make an impact. And I just realized, like, not everyone's going to have the story that I had. Right. And so how can I start to bring that influence, impact, that network to them? And that's how the, uh, in 2014, that was the impetus, if you will, of the Creative Works Conference. Ten years ago. Yeah, so I, I think you kind of said something really powerful there. Uh, the fact that you grew exponentially okay. being with other good designers. Yes. We're like, and that says something about the power of community. Yes. In the formation of creativity or the growth of creativity. Like, how would you, can you talk a little bit about? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the gist is, is we're all in our own little bubbles, right? You know, we all have the things that we like. We have our tastes. We have there are influences and that's incredibly vast from what we grew up with as a child to what we ended up doing through high school and years where we felt, you know, creative or took risks in our young, younger years. Mm -hmm. And so when you arrive at, you know, a practice yeah. or a studio, you're bringing all of that stuff with you. And some of it can be tacky. Some of it can be wrong, frankly. I mean, design is a very objective practice and some of it can be wrong. And I think community, what community does, whether you're at a conference, working with the studio, um, you know, talking with a mentor, following people online on Instagram, you start to understand like, oh, wow, okay, so this is good and this is not good. Um, or you hear a perspective that blows your perspective up and helps you understand like, oh, this is the history of this. This is why a logo looks good. This is why it doesn't look good, you know? And some of that can be taught in school uh, some of that can be learned online through presentations. I mean, it really comes from everywhere. But the more people you surround yourself with, the more things you get to pick and choose from, the more you get to understand what's right and wrong and what most people believe or the people you look up to believe. And that adds to your growth in an exponential way versus, you know, you scrolling through, just scrolling or just on YouTube or just on Skillshare or just, you know, kind of doing it on your own. Yeah. So when you were, when you created this conference, like I was talking to you, like some people might feel like there's a craft component. Yes. But when it comes to creativity, especially design, at the end of the day, people are still trying to run independent businesses. And so right. there's definitely a commerce component. Yes. Um, Where you have to make money. I mean, you do. Even, without a doubt. And again, like the gift is, and Ecclesiastes says this about like, it, it, there's nothing better for a man to work and then to eat and drink and, be, and have pleasure from the work from his hands. And that too is a gift from God. Like the idea that the thing that I can create can produce the sort of income that helps like absolutely me live a life yeah. and make a living. And so when it comes to this conference and you trying to do that, what's been the sort of like, how, how have you seen creators able to do that? And how has this conference helped people like help creators do that? Yeah. So, I mean, for the most part, I find that, you know, especially early on in a creative's life, you're going to take a job or an opportunity, right? And that's yeah. not necessarily going to be in line with 
what you probably hoped for or set out for yeah. when you were young. Yeah. Or, you know, when you were thinking about becoming a graphic designer or a brand designer, hand letter or whatever. And so you have to kind of cut your teeth. Yeah. And what this conference does, um, and over time, you know, you, you lose your way or you get consumed with paying debt or, yeah. or whatever it is. And this get conference, stuck or yes, you get stuck. You, this conference will remind you of basically why you started doing what you were doing in the first place. It'll show you the possibilities of a creative work and career. Yeah. And so it'll start to open your mind for what opportunities you could take in your own life to either start your own practice, your own company, your, um, who you could work for, who you could emulate, who could possibly mentor you, and again, grow exponentially. Yeah. What's been the experience around... Around... Uh, about... Uh, web design and like what you've seen creatives do there. Obviously, we're a website builder. Right. Um, obviously, I mean, the big thing is for our cards is I think the thing that we've seen with creators is at some point creatives have gotten stuck. For, for our community, no. including a lot of people who are building brands. Right. Typically, a website is involved in that. Yeah, of course. Um, and the barrier has usually been code. Right. And so a lot of graphic designers or brand designers have typically not done that part of it or said to like someone else. Yeah, yeah. Because they're like, man, I, I don't want. And even often when they do that, they it, something gets lost in translation where it's like, yeah, I saw a meme the other day where it's like, here's a girl with great hair <laughs> that I've designed in like some prototyping tool. And then when I see it on the web, it's like a dude with a wig on. Right, for sure. <laughs> um, so what's been sort of your personal experience and the people in the community there experience with web design? And what's sort of been like the biggest pain point when it's come to that? Well, I think what's really interesting with, you know, web design, UI, UX design, and then brand design is that um, historically it's come from two separate worlds, right? Coding, like a coder's mind, right. uh, a math mind. It's probably not a math mind. It's probably not the best way to say that, but just like some engineering. Is, that's right. Of, yeah. Engineering. Yeah. Because you're problem solving in a different way, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, to work this out in the past, you had to be a, a certain kind of person at our studio at Asterix um, back in the day. We had a, an entire wing of our company that did not do any of the print work mm -hmm. or the brand work. They just did design, interactive, and experience um, for web and for, uh, for you know, applications, things like that. And that meant code. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they did, they did interface design, but they had to code it out to make it work. Right. And so there were just two sides of our company that had not only had two different kind of gifts, but they had, we had two different kind of perspectives and passions. Yeah. And I think those two things historically have kept those, those, uh, two fields kind of separate, or at least the people feeling separate. Yeah. And today with things like show it, you don't need to know the coding side. Yeah. You can, you know, dream about what you want to create and then make that. And and having a website for a lot of different reasons is so important today, especially if you're a brand designer, you want to share your work or you're a brand designer and you want to build a website for a client and have control over that brand. You know, learning uh, how to, to launch a website is incredibly important. So yeah. if you can do that in a really simple and easy way and one that you're intuitively understanding you know without code WYSIWYG, whatever you yeah. want to you know call it like yeah. that's incredibly important yeah in in regards to i think one of the great things about i think community conferences like this are like community driven conferences uh and we talked about this in the beginning is 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 growth like right exponential growth right and part of that is alan talked about this a little bit uh actually everybody did i feel like and I feel like it's, it's happening on, on small platforms, big platforms. People are always coming back to like identity. Yeah. And so identity from, and again, like when you think about brand design, brand identity, visual systems, this still, it's still a company trying to say, we're trying to find ourselves. Sure. You know? And so like when you think about this conference and thinking about just young designers, like how would you, it's almost like a pastor moment. Sure. Like how you talk through like the process of, like forming your identity, you know, and the role that either community um, like has in doing that and the, and the role that conferences like this and others um, have in doing that. You know, I don't know how everyone likes to articulate it or think about it, but I think the way I look at it 
is about you controlling your own story mm. or you, you know, helping someone else, um, you know, share their story, right? So if you're thinking of client work, it's sharing someone else's story and values in a compelling way and engaging way. But for creators and creatives, you know, if we're putting together our own identity or our own brand, like at the end of the day, we really have to control what other people see because that sets the tone for what people come to us for, right? And so if you, if you just show a bunch of pretty pictures on your website, you leave it up to the user to kind of define you. Mm. Um, or if you just use Helvetica, you, you, I mean, you're, you're saying a certain thing, right? Mm. And so, you know, and I have a problem with this too because I have Creative Works is what I do. It's, it's it, in some ways, it's a very personal brand of mine, but Josh Horton is fairly ambiguous <laughs> because I, there is no, jo I mean, there's a joshhorton.com, but I haven't put anything up there. So I think it's vitally important and I, and I plan this year to start doing this but starting to control my narrative, you know, people mm. can find out if I'm real or not, right? Anyone can say anything. Right. But at least, you know, having a presence online and, and, and pointing people to your website uh, can help people understand, like, who you are, what you want to do, what type of work you do, and what you want to be doing and what you don't want to be doing. Very you don't true. even have to explicitly say that. You can just not show that work, right? Um, and so I think it's vitally important for almost everyone in our industry to have their own I identity and understand the importance of that. So if say you're a young designer or a designer who's feeling stuck or doing, keeps on doing the wrong kind of work or getting the wrong kind of connections, yeah. I I'd bet it has a lot to do with your portfolio and your website and what you're putting out there and the story that you're telling your brand uh, more than it does um, yeah. with, you just getting, you know, clients that you're not happy with. Yeah. The work that you're not happy with. So if you would tell a young person who who feels stuck and is just trying to think about like what's the next thing I should what's the best next step? Like think of somebody just fresh yeah. out of school or maybe two to five years into their journey and they're in that space where it's like, I, I'm doing work because I need to. I gotta pay bills. That's right. But it's not the work I love. I don't feel like it actually expresses who I am. Like if they're on that journey and like, what would be the, something again for someone who's been doing it? I mean, 20 years, it's like, what would you, what's the sort of like guidance you'd give a young designer to say, Hey, do these things. And I think you'll see, you know, the progress you're looking for. Well, so I think Annika uh, Hanstein Isora said it best in her opening talk mm -hmm. where she was trying to make sure, uh, or they were trying to make sure that we all understood that, at some point to remain happy in your career and your craft, you've got to wrap your own identity into your work or your own values into your work. And I think that's incredibly important. Um, and I think that's honestly, it's the goal, right? So we all start out doing things that we don't want to do. When I started out in the recording industry, I changed the kitty litter box. I <laughs> cleaned the roof off uh, when it was... Yep. Um, you know, when it was storming outside of Memphis and there was drains and I had to clean the roof off so it wouldn't flood the studio. I had to um, clean the bathrooms at times. I had to op just wait and open the door for the artists that came in and out, right? But I had to cut my teeth doing things that I didn't necessarily want to do, not only so I could, you know, be worth, uh, you know, a worthy investment for the employer, but to, to really understand the business, right? So you're going to have to do some of that. Um, but beyond that, I think the best thing that you can do is be thinking about what's important to you and how you can involve that in the services that you provide, whether it's the type of jobs that you pick, the type of network that you get into, mm -hmm. like what are their values? A shared value is really, really important yeah. um, there. And then as time goes on, you'll start to attract the things that you want That's in the future um, that you're trying to build. I mean, it's literally within your brand, your website, how you put yourself out there is really what comes back to you. That's good. I mean, I don't just believe that. I see that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs>